Church. Amen. Welcome everyone in Old First Presbyterian Church and to those in our virtual community. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us this beautiful Sunday morning to celebrate and honor our Lord. May God bless you. And we're taking this time to introduce our guest preacher, Dr. Reverend Grace. She is now a stranger in the house. Everybody know her practically. So we thank you, we welcome you, Dr. Grace, in the whole First Presbyterian Church. We thank you for all these things that you are doing for us and the words. So we pray that God help us, you know, to practice all the words that you are giving to us for the glory of the Lord. Amen. Please let us stand for our court worship. The God of all creation make us one in the flesh. In, in Jesus Christ we are made one in the spirit. In Jesus Christ we are made one in the spirit. Let, let us be united to the truth through the same one spirit. Thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word. As we continue in the service this morning, we pray that you will hear your, your voice. We will hear your voice. We ask that your Holy Spirit will be at work, opening our ear to hear and our heart to receive your word. May we be transformed into your likeness. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
is a way maker. Give the Lord a hand. You can stand in the darkest of your days, and do you know the sun is behind those clouds? And the sun is the sun, right? I just thought I'd say it. This is a simple song. All you have to do is sing, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. Savior, Savior, Savior. And heal it, heal it, heal it. Real simple. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 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 Jesus.
today will be from Psalm 67 for the director of music with stringed instruments, a psalm song. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. The word of God for the people of God. I look to you. 
We 
are torn down. And when it happens, guess what? Some of us cry out to God. It's not hard to identify with this woman, with the suffering of this mother. Helpless to heal her child, she turns to the local healer as her last resort. Jesus will help her, she thinks. But wait a minute. This cannot be right. We hear that. Jesus refuses to help this woman. Yes, you heard me correctly. Jesus says, I don't care. He completely ignores her opinion for mercy. He ignores, he ignores her, even his own disciples. Do the same. In fact, they demand Jesus to send her away. And Jesus agrees with them. But guess what? He goes and says to her, I was only sent to the lost ship of the house of Israel. So, there we have it. Jesus doesn't care about this woman. Jesus, our own Jesus, is refusing to help this woman and her daughter because they are foreigners. Isn't this how we act sometimes toward others on the road when they don't want, when we don't want them to pass us on the highway? Or what about when we're about to leave the, a parking lot after food shopping and someone else is waiting for that spot, what about that church? Do we act like Jesus? At work? Or even in our home? Maybe we don't want to, have, to let them in. We don't want to accept them or even help them. Because like Jesus, we claim they are foreigners. Well, they don't speak like us. They don't act like us. They don't even look like us. Hmm. Yes, we claim they are not citizens of this house of Israel. And so we reject others because we say they are Canaanites and visible, unimportant, outsider, and guess what? They in fact a minority. As a result, the woman is not to be the subject of Jesus' compassion and mercy. And as a result, Jesus turns her away. He turns her off. But the woman stands up for herself. She knows she's, she's helpless. The woman refuses to be sent away. She is protesting. She kneels before the Lord and says, Lord, help me. Still, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, refuses and says, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Oh, wow. Jesus is actually calling her a dog. In other words, it is not fair to take what is intended for my people, for our people, and give it to those that are foreigners. Harsh. Jesus is so harsh here. But the woman says, I am a desperate mother 
guess what? You can insult me. You can say whatever you want, Jesus. I am not leaving. Because I know who you are. I know you can heal my child. The woman is in a desperate situation. And in that desperation, she speaks the word of truth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yet, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Ooh, this mother is not playing. She replies, and allow me to pass. Lord, I know that my people have been compared maybe to monkeys. I know that my people have been compared to dogs. Still, do we not treat our dogs with respect and give them crumbs that fall from our tables? Please, Lord, you, son of David, you know better. Just throw us a bone. Please, Jesus, cast out the demonic spirit that lives in my dog and nourish her soul. Oh, at this point, Jesus is shamed by the word of this mother. Well, I cool the Son of God, the master of the miracles, deny this request. Jesus is so ashamed, and finally, his eyes are open. Woman, he says, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And in, in, in that essence, her daughter is here. You know, this is a very uncomfortable story in the Bible. If Jesus, the Savior of humanity, treats a woman Treat a human being like this. What about us? What about us when we are desperate? When we pray and we're tired of praying? When we need his help? And I'm asking myself, why on earth did Matthew, of all people, they thought it was good to put this story in his gospel? Is it the, and let me tell you my brothers and sisters in the Lord, this is the only place in scripture which put Jesus in a bad light. The only place where Jesus is bested in an argument. You know he's always right. But here, the woman said, I got this. So why is it here? Why do we have this story in Matthew? See, when my sister was reading a, a prayer of confession, she said, we come to you today, oh God, helper of the weak, for you are gracious, oh merciful and forgiving. But this Jesus that we we just encounter is being described as an example of a Christian and he actually invites us to follow in his footsteps. But when we read the beginning of the story, before Jesus heals this woman, daughter, she 
God. There was no time or room for her in Jesus' dish. He had better things to do. So he tells her, I was sent only for the lordship of Israel, not to you, because you are a foreigner. You are not my problem. But when the mother fights back, his eyes open up. And Jesus truly sees her for the first time. He hears her. His heart is open. And he knows compassion and pain. It is the right thing to do. And that's what happens to us when we hear others, when we experience others, and we open up our hearts to others. Because if we decide to only look at the physical stature, the physical person, his body, the way they carry themselves, we will act like Jesus and say, uh-uh, you don't belong here. But when we open our hearts, we will truly see the person as a Christian supposed to do. So it turns out that Jesus is setting up an example for us as Christians to follow. Number one, Accepting and welcoming others. Number two, never give up. Remember this woman? When the disciples said, mm -mm, mm, don't, don't shout. When Jesus said, you are a dog, she fought back. She did not say, uh uh, I'm leaving because the Savior of the Lord said, I don't belong here. I'm going to run. But Jesus and the lady stood up for what was right, for what was fair, for, for, for what is acceptable in her, in Jesus' Christian life. And you know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we will fall. And so what Jesus is teaching us today is that we should see other people with the eyes of our heart. Not just the physical appearance. So a teenager frustrated with school had decided to quit. He was fed up with the studies and didn't believe it would do him any good. So he goes to his mother and says, Mom, I'm tired. I don't want to go to school anymore. This school is useless. The mother said, Son, you cannot quit. All the people who made the difference in the world did not quit. George Washington did not quit. Thomas Edison did not quit. Nelson Mandela did not quit. Harry Tubman did not quit. In fact, she went back looking for her brothers and sisters. And what about? Elmo James. The teenager scratched his head and said, Mom, I don't remember ever hearing about Elmo James. What did he do? The mom said, Can you see? You never heard of him because he quit. How badly do you want to be a Christian? How badly 
never, never give up. Despite the disciples, despite the name calling, she did not stop yelling. And recently, there was a story about a, a, a young 18 years old boy who had multiple sclerosis. He desperate, he desperately wanted to become an eagle scout. But part of the requirement was a 16 mile hike. His friends, his mother, his family members tried to convince him that he was unworthy. But he wouldn't give up. He wouldn't listen to anybody. So the first 10 miles of the hike, he completed in his wheelchair. When his arms became too sore to continue, he fell out of his wheelchair and crawled the remaining six miles to finish the requirement of an eagle scout. That's exactly what Jesus is expecting us to do. To never give up in the face of adversity, but to be resilient and fight for what is fair, for what is just, and for what is right. Sometimes we can be too opinionated, too fixed in our views, too eager to, to believe that we are right. But the Christian way is to follow the Jesus' way, is to accept the challenges, to pursue the truth, to be open to new insight and possibility, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. In doing so, we will be transformed by the riches of God's grace. And because of the, 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 uh, the fact that the resilience of this woman, Jesus healed her child. Jesus declares to the woman, and in front of his disciples, whom he always was seeking to teach. You have great faith. Your request is granted. And without going to her home, without even seeing the poor kids, the child was healed. And so Jesus is inviting us today and is asking us to keep on asking to keep on stepping, to keep on fighting, to keep on praying, and not to give up. Seek, he says, knock, and keep on knocking until the door is open. But we must be willing to do so. So we are, we have also to invite everyone to accept all, no matter where they come from, no matter what they look like, no matter if they look like whatever, we need to accept them. Thank you. Amen. Please stand for our affirmation. 
Thank you. 